we're talking comedians, comedians in, in uh, cars getting coffee, which is something that's been around for like five years. So, of course, I just discovered it this past weekend. So there you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm cutting edge, if nothing else. Welcome to Let's Play Every Day, sponsored by our good friends at Northern Lids. We've got C. Willie Miles back with us, or C. Dubs, he's got there. And back once again, uh, Heather Rule and Jesse Pierce. Great to have you guys along for the ride today. And uh, obviously the A topic was, is, remains the Minnesota Vikings and what happened. Uh, Willie was with us yesterday. I was able to uh, ask him a couple of things. I would like to, if I can, just start with you guys. And, and we... This wasn't a surprise, but maybe in a sense it was, depending you know, depending upon what you thought was going to happen, what you'd been led to believe was going to happen. So if I can take you back 24 hours, the news crosses your Twitter feed. Your first reaction, Heather Rule, is what? I was glad that Spielman got the hook as well. Because <laughs> um, I think that was the maybe surprising part. Um, I think even from over the weekend, some of the reports that people were seeing that he was going to stay on in some other different role, different capacity, which I think can make people nervous sometimes because it's like, okay, well, he's he wouldn't be the GM, but he'd still be around. So that's kind of weird. Um, so I think the Zimmer news was, I think everyone expected that, right? I don't think that was a big shock, even even for Zimmer, right? Didn't he like take photos on the field or or something like that Walking after the off game? with his son and with, um, uh, yeah. Yeah, so I think everyone kind of knew that was going to happen, um, but I was glad to see that Spielman went as well because I think they need a fresh start there too. I think keeping him and getting rid of Zimmer would have only accomplished half of what you needed, so I was glad to see that. JP? Yeah, I mean, I completely agree with Heather. I think Zim, <clears throat> no surprise, but I'm glad Spielman also out of there. Uh, it's funny, I actually saw across my Twitter timeline this morning come across Sam Alley, who is a sports reporter up in Duluth, had said Mike Zimmer actually predicted his demise back in 2018 um, because he had basically said to an NFL writer, Kevin Petra, that it is important that Rick and I get the the correct quarterback for our team, right? And uh, kind of Kirk's fault, right? Let's just say it out loud. It's a little <laughs> bit Kirk Cousins' fault that Mike Zimmer and Rick Spielman are now out. It was that contract. It's the way that he's performed under that contract. Um, so darn you, Kirk. But yeah, I mean, all the best to, to Zim and Spielman. Like everyone said, nobody wants to see someone get fired, but there was a lack of result and you needed to have somebody on the hook for it. So they're both out time to clean house and uh, start anew, if you will. I thought it was telling even the way both men handled it. So Spielman um, put out a statement right away, went in and addressed the team, you know, all the rest of it. Crickets, where Zim was concerned for hours, you know, until he finally got the statement. And even then it was sort of a halfway statement. And, um, you know, in, 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 in the comments he made down the stretch you know, on the way out, he got emotional about his defense. He got emotional about Harrison Smith. He got emotional about Anthony Barr. You know, it's just like, dude, half the team will not save your, you know what I mean? You, you need all the guys. You need all the guys. And and oh. the fact that he just never got there, showed me again, eight years, just no development. I mean, he just didn't right. grow in the role or as a person, in my opinion. No, no, I agree with you 100%. Here's the thing, though, I, you know, what I think, and I, and I don't think anybody's overlooked it, and, 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 and Jesse touched on it just, just a skosh. Um, Kirk Cousins, and it wasn't all, I shouldn't say it was all his fault, because it really wasn't, but, but he played a huge role in it. And, and the way his contract, look, I'm not opposed to someone making that kind of money, but it should be performance laced like everybody else's the problem with his money was it was guaranteed it didn't matter if he won or lost they won a playoff game so all he all, literally all he has to do is stay healthy that's all he has to do and just go out there and just put up four thousand yards and then everybody and i saw so many people on his bandwagon i don't understand how people just keep riding this guy and keep talking about how great he is and it's like i'm so sorry that you feel that way about mediocrity you know, this guy made – only thing he won – I think I tweeted this. The only thing he won was money. That's all he won his whole time here, just bank loads of money because he didn't bring – no, and that's, they downfall started when they signed him to that big check 
and then and then they went what eight and eight his first year. Mm-hmm. You can blame it on a lot of things, but you got a lot less money to work with to bring other people into the fold when you do that. And and he didn't live up to say Brady. He didn't live up to um, uh, Rogers. He didn't live up to any of those type of quarterbacks. But he made that kind of money, and that's where you you look at Spillman and go, "What was your deal? Was to bring this guy in and pay him that kind of money?" And then you can tell Zimmer was never happy with the deal, and and from the get go, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure that wasn't his guy, you know, and that's why he gave him, you know, a, a rookie offensive coordinator this year. Right, and and he wasn't Which coming are- in like he wasn't this. It wasn't like they were bringing in some superstar quarterback, right? I remember when they brought him in and it was like, you know, they fought. It wasn't like quite like the Brett Favre thing, but they felt, I think some of the media like followed him like, oh, here, he's at this restaurant. He just landed and he's here in Minneapolis. And But I remember thinking, I'm like, I, you know, I know I don't know all the X's and O's and everything, but like, he's not that great of a quarterback. I don't know what everyone is getting so excited about. I mean, he's average. Mm-hmm. at best and that's what you got right eight, like you said eight and eight and they're what eight and nine this year with the added game I watched, that's what you're yeah. gonna get i don't know i watched him and and and, and, and at, when he was at the washington that's the thing but it was right after rg3 left whatever and and i was just you know so i got curious so i looked up his i looked at him in college or so i went look back at some video and i looked i'm like this is the same thing this guy's been doing <laughs> He, and then in this last two years there, they wouldn't even give him a long-term contract. It's like, no, we're not giving you that kind of money, dude. You're just – and then all of a sudden when the Vikings signed him, I was like, oh, my God. Why would they <laughs> – I mean, I'm, I'm sure. I don't know whatever quarterback was sitting back there thinking, really? That's all you got to do? And it was like the best contract. Like, you don't have to – Percentage wise, it doesn't matter if your team makes it to the playoff. It doesn't. You don't have to throw for five thousand yards. You don't have to have X amount of touch. Just this is your check. Period. Significantly a better contract than Tom Brady had than Aaron Rodgers had. Yeah, because you know, yeah, because because it, it's been used as the springboard for everybody else since that time. It's it's arguably like if you're an agent, like his agent goes into the agent hall of fame because of, <laughs> because of that deal, because he got that deal. So um, the, the, here, here's where it goes, why he got it. So he was at Michigan state and then he was at Washington. And every time he would come in, you know, he would sort of be that kind of that flavor of the month. He would be like, oh, he throws the ball better than RG3 does. He doesn't run like he does, but, he, man, he can come in, he can throw the ball. If he had a better offensive line, if he mm-hmm. had better receivers, if he had a running back that could take the pressure off, that's why the next GM will come. If this is, okay, in my perfect world, the Vikings hire a GM, he gets a coach, they talk, they bring Kirk in, they sit him down, and they ask him one quick question. Will you restructure your contract? And if the answer is no, the conversation's over. And then you start right. calling teams and saying, we got a guy for you. If he'll restructure his contract, you can at least have the conversation. You may still trade him or work that, but at least now, Courtney Cronin had some comments from Cousins, the first ones I've ever seen, where he's like, he wouldn't be specific, but he said, I'm open to having the conversation because I want to be a Minnesota Viking. Willie, I'm sorry to tell you that news, but that <laughs> that that kind of opened the door a little bit again for maybe him restructuring that contract, which he has steadfastly <laughs> refused to do to this, this point. But w- what happens is, and this is a man thing, I think, and you guys correct me if I'm wrong, but guys always think we can fix things. And if you're sitting down there and you had a really good track record, you're in... New Orleans, or I won't say Tampa because Brady's there, but you're in some place at Pittsburgh or Denver that needs a quarterback. You can go, if I had, if I had him, we can make him better. Mm-hmm. And that's what the Vikings can go. Interested? Well, we what will you give me for him? So if somebody's going to take him, and and maybe it's Cleveland, right. maybe it's Stefanski. I had him. I can do this. Somebody's going to take that chance because there's a guy involved, and he's going to think he can make them better. Am I wrong, ladies? I mean, see, here's the thing. See, then the women knows that the man can't do it, so they're going to step in and try to fix the man, right? Like, we're going to be like, no, no, you're not. We're just going to call a guy who knows how to do it and just get it done right the first time. We don't need you to try. I mean, I think that's why Cousins probably said what he said. He wants to stay here because it's some stability, right? He knows it's, 
he's got the stability here. He has the the contract here. It's it's kind the of talents around hands. him, right? Like, well, and he needs to realize that. I think he still has failed to recognize that. Like Justin Jefferson, maybe give him a shot, right? I mean, you have the pieces here, and and I feel for Justin Jefferson too because the way things kind of ended oh. the season, I'm curious to see hear what he thinks, right? I mean. I don't know that Zim was necessarily trying to prohibit him from, from breaking the record, but it was also kind of yes, the way that Zim ended things. Yeah. It just, for Justin Jefferson, I would be like, what the hell, man? Like what, what's going on? So, I mean, I'm sure it's starting to have things question him. So you want to keep him around for cousins because cousins should be able to hit Jefferson. There's no reason like go to him every time. He's a phenomenal, phenomenal player. Like you have the pieces here. So Kirk needs to just kind of get that through the skull of his, um, a little bit, I think, as well. So did you see any of the Tampa game on Sunday? Tampa, I'm trying to remember who they're even playing, yeah. but they're Carolina, right? Yeah. Carolina. They're in the second half, right? All of a sudden, Brady is feeding Gronk, and he's feeding Gronk, and then we find out afterwards, Gronk had some elevators on his contract, you know? Yeah. Exactly. But Gronk doesn't need the money, but he wants it, oh, right? Yeah. Right. So, I mean, so if, if, if Justin Jefferson says that he and Kirk had that conversation during the week, Kirk should have known. It doesn't matter what they call mm. on the sideline. You look up, you look over the defense, and you go, check, check, or whatever the right. call sequence is, you know, and you change the play. Yeah. And you throw it to the guy to get – so it. you can say what you want about Zim, but even on that one, that's still on Cousins. That's on Cousins, yeah. Yeah, yeah you got to be a series. team guy. Yeah, that last series showed that he is not a team guy. That's, just I mean, you know how the team would have got behind him if he did just do that. But everybody on that squad knew that that guy needed 17 yards. Everybody knew it. And, and all they wanted him to get the record because they like him. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so throw him the ball. I don't. Yeah, the game was already intact. It didn't matter if you win or lose. Your GM and the head coach is gone anyway. <laughs> You know, so it doesn't matter. So throw this. What are they going to do to you at this point? Yeah, they no. can't bench you, right? Like they're right. out before you are. Throw him the ball. They threw that one to him that he dropped, and that's only because he was so excited he wanted to take off before he got the ball. I saw that took his eye off the ball. But then run the route, run the route, throw him the ball, give him an opportunity. You know what I mean? And it just it drives me absolutely nuts. But you're right. I watched that game with Tampa Bay, and they. And, and and they were going to pull him out. And he wanted to go back in because he didn't want to put that on Gabbard to try to get the ball to Crunk. He knew the plays he could call to get Crunk open so he can get that extra 500000 right. or extra mm-hmm. million yeah. or whatever. You know what I mean? And it's, you're right. He don't need the money. But at the end of the day, that's your buddy. He came down there because of you. Let's get him every penny. You don't know when his last game is going to be. You know what I mean? And that's Jefferson, man. You don't know how many yards he's going to get next year. Yeah, he may have a chance to break it. But let's do it now. We got him. He's at home, and he the fans love him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Everybody wants it for him. And he got booed at the end. They got booed because they didn't get to throw him the ball. And that's sad. Yeah, and that's yeah. on the coach. Yeah. That's on well, the coach, and that's on the quarterback. And Jefferson has been probably one of the biggest bright spots for the team this year. Like, when they did get him the ball – and then, I mean, was it? Didn't Zimmer after the game say something like, "Well, I, I, you know, I, I care about winning." Yeah, a game that like, absolutely nothing. It cost us right. three spots okay. in the draft order. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, now you care about winning, right. Mister. Eight like, losses, and it, it doesn't know. matter at that point. Like, what you know, I understand. Yeah, earlier in the season or the couple weeks before, when you still had a shot at the playoffs, it's like that. That doesn't matter. No, no. Get the ball to Jefferson. Why not? Yeah. I mean, there were still made it so personal. many times this season they just didn't do it. And it became like a talking point too. Like, oh, well, yeah, like we sat down and we decided, yeah, this week we're going to go to Jefferson. <laughs> really? Brilliant. Oh, Brilliant. Okay. Well, My four-year-old said that before. You know? it out. Yeah. <laughs> think, about the, think about the that. impact of Justin Jefferson and where these guys are concerned because – the Vikings, if you go back to, and Tyler Furness disagrees with me on this, and that's great. You know, that's what this, we don't, we shouldn't always agree on everything like that. But if you go back to not this year's draft, but the year before, the Vikings had the, what, the ninth pick in the draft, and the Philadelphia Eagles had the eighth pick in the draft. And the Vikings need a receiver. And, the, and, and Jamar Chase was gone, you know, different, different guys had been taken, different receivers, Devontae Smith had been, had been taken, not Chase. And it comes to the Vikings. They're two picks away. They know they want Justin Jefferson. The Eagles are in front of him. The Eagles need a receiver. And their GM, Rosen, takes um, Rigor, Jason Rigor. Have you guys heard about Jason Rigor since he's been in the NFL? Nope. No. no. And there, you can you can go find this clip on YouTube. There's 
Spielman and, 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 and Zimmer cackling because they know the Eagles have just up. I mean, they mm-hmm. have just majorly. So now the Vikings, this guy drops in their lap. What mm-hmm. I would love to be able to do, I would love to be able to see the draft board to see what would the Vikings have done if the Eagles had taken Justin Jefferson. If we have uh, Ragor is our choice, if we if they take Ragor as the wide receiver and he bombs us spectacularly here in Minnesota, as he has in Philadelphia, are either of those guys even here after last season, much less this one? I I argue that Justin Jefferson bought those both of those men another year, mm-hmm. and it was a complete fluke that they got him in the first place. He, in my book, Rick Spielman gets zero credit for that draft. Zero. Right. Right. I, I agree with you 100%, and, and I don't know why – you know, I, well, I get it. You know, my point is they didn't reward the guy who saved no. their ass. Yeah. Right. right. I mean, Justin right. Jefferson has walked in and completely, ex- all those guys should be giving him whatever. You want ice cream? <laughs> do, you, do you want the comfy bed? Do shoes, you want right? another sweater? I'll yeah. get it for you. Look, he bought, to me, he bought the same type of energy that Randy Moss bought when he came here. You know, with none of the, the negativity. That, Cause I was the there, neg- Willie. Yeah. I get you. I get you. You you feel about Randy Moss and you got your feel, but I was just talking about football wise, the mm. energy that he bought on the field. You know, uh, you know. I mean, and and no one took a chance on him, and then Denny Green did. He picked him, and look at. I mean, this guy's a HOF, buddy. You know, <laughs> he came in and lit it up, and I mean. He, and you're right, everybody in that him. team had more swagger and more confidence because Randy Moss was on their team. Same with the Vikings. With, you're, you're, you're right. You're right. Yeah. He made everybody else around him better. He made it better for Steelers. He made it better for, you know, for Rudolph mm-hmm. because he was a burner. He'd get down the field, and these guys were catching balls right and left. And then it was like, throw him the ball. Yeah, and remember, he didn't even start for the first four games of the season. Whose decision was that? Who is the, who did we have that Justin Jefferson couldn't get on the field? And Mike, I would get you the ice cream, but since your wife does everything better than I do, I just figure that you know she she's gonna do that too. Yeah, so, maybe. So, so let's go on to the uh, let's go on to the now what? So now going forward, the Wilts came out yesterday and said we're gonna get a general manager, then we're gonna get a head coach. Entirely proper. That should be the GM's call. And then other conversations came up saying you should expect diversity in this hire because the Wilfs are committed to it. And and at one point, and I don't know what this event was, but Ziggy and Mark Wilf were on the stage with the gentleman who was asking them questions. And, and this can again be YouTubed. And Mark Wilf made a reference to the fact that our family survived the Holocaust, right? We are committed to diversity. We are committed to social justice. We are committed to doing these things. And they put Kevin Warren as the president of the team, and he left to become the president of the Big Ten. And I'm, I'm blanking on her name. You guys have the script I sent you. It's in there. They put a woman in, in or maybe I wrote the piece for uh, Let's Play Football, mm-hmm. who was the director of, 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 of scouting, and then Denver took her, you know, as their mm-hmm. assistant uh, director of player personnel. So they've done these hires in the past, and they've gotten them right. You know, they put mm-hmm. the right person. So where people are kind of freaking out about, oh, why does race enter into this? You know, uh, I don't have a problem with it because I'm thinking, and Willie, help, correct me if I'm wrong, if I am a minority con- a candidate, for, for whatever it is, I'm thinking if I have my choice between A, B, C, or D, or the Vikings, I'm looking at the Vikings because they've got a history of doing this and doing it right. 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 And the only thing that I, I, I don't like is when they call them diversity hires. Yes. Uh, I think you're qualified. I think you were just qualified to do the job, and I and it wouldn't have to be diversity hire if you were just hiring in the, you know, beforehand. And look, I I know um, um, a lot of people that that work over at the Vikings uh, in their front office and so forth and so on. And I I agree 100% with what he said. Um, but at the end of the day, you know, they they bought back. Um, uh, Martin Nance, who was a wide receiver for the Vikings, and he's he's like a VP over there in their marketing and advertising and stuff like that. But so, and a lot of their junior executives over there are too. So I don't like the the word diversity hire. But yes, I agree with you 100. percent If I'm going to go work for a team, I want to work for a team ownership that has that background in hiring. Uh, so when I walk in there, every I, I'm not the only one. You know what I mean? I want, yeah. to look, I want I want that team. I want that organization to look like the team that represents them on the field. And I think every ownership should want that. 
Mm-hmm. Why would you have this hierarchy <coughs> that don't look anything like what's represented on your field? You know what I mean? Because that's what wins the game down there. But up there is what keeps them there. You know what I mean? You know, yeah. guys don't want to go play or work for anybody else unless if they're working for a company that really appreciates what they do. Right. Like for me, I think it's the token. You don't want a token hire. Don't hire me exactly. just because I'm right. fulfilling a box on your, your to-do list, right? So you need to have be very genuine and authentic. I think you hire the best available candidate. Now, in my opinion right now, the best available candidate also fills your diversity box. I think Brian Flores should absolutely get a shot as being a head coach. I think Miami made a big mistake, unless there's something Huge. that we're not sure of, like there was behind the scenes thing that caused that. I mean, considering that they lost seven straight while they were dealing with quarterback injuries, but then they won seven straight with a heck of a lot less talent than the Minnesota Vikings. Um, I mean, I would say he is a high candidate on my list. I would hire him. And again, it feeds into your diversity box too, but I think it's just because he's frankly the best available out there. Right for a head coaching job. So yeah, to, to Willie's point, I mean, again, it, it just don't make it a token hire and that goes across the board in anything. Don't say, Oh, we want to hire more women. So we're going to hire just a woman that's there. I mean, if she's the very best, then absolutely her being a woman shouldn't really have anything to do with it. Right. We've talked about that yeah. plenty with Cheryl Reeves for crying out loud. I mean, if she's the best, put her where she deserves to be. Exactly. And, and that's absolutely. across the board. So Brian Flores, let's go bring him in. You think you should get at least an interview? I mean, I, I just you know to end the season the way they did, winning what eight straight or whatever down down the down the stretch, mm-hmm. and and um, yeah, and he dealt with a lot going on earlier. And people are saying, oh, and that'll mean Deshaun Watson will come here. And I'm like, ah, uh, wait, there's like twenty some sexual assault lawsuits waiting for Deshaun Watson. So I think we need to get some resolution there before we we, we go Not a bad to that, idea to that next step. Um, yeah, but but I I just um I just I think the Wolves have shown themselves in my opinion. It's one of the things that's wrong with the NFL and probably does it a lot of sports too is at the end of the Super Bowl, the first person they give the trophy to is the owner. Right. And you know what? All he does is unless you're Jerry Jones who thinks he's the coach and all the rest of the, the head of the draft department, <laughs> all they do is sign the checks. He exactly. should get to he gave his picture taken with the trophy, but maybe like 65th right right yeah <laughs> exactly standing behind yeah. the team because he's just the guy he's the he's the man behind the curtain that's what that's what they mm-hmm. all are but they want to be on that stage man and say look, look what i've i've done and like always says is that when you look at sometimes at the executives when they all come down in the stage and you look at the players and you look at the executives and you think to yourself wow look at that <laughs> representation of the team and then look at the representation of the ownership Mm-hmm. and the executive ship you know what i mean and that's i mean you get to look at your arc chart sometime and then look at your chart down on the field and if your arc chart in the executive office don't look like your arc chart down on the field then you got you got issues mm-hmm. you know and then you can say you're bringing in the right people but where are you looking for the right people you know and another thing we need to address and, and this is this is becoming an epidemic is this this nepotism, this these hiring these coaches with their sons, and you know, I mean, I'm so sick of it. I'm so sick of these head coaches and their sons moving up to be offensive and defensive coordinators when they've done nothing. They've done nothing but showed up to work with their dad. You know, that's all they've done. Don't you have daughters? Bring them there. You know what I mean? I'm okay with a nepotism hire if it's a female, but I'm so <laughs> sick and tired of bringing your son to work with you. And next thing you know, he's in the box. He's an offensive coordinator because dad let him read his book. That don't make you an offensive coordinator. You don't play the game, not even at any level. I'm starting to rant. Yeah. Uh, but, no. here's the thing. <laughs> but I'm sorry. I mean, but I mean, this, yeah, this, this, written you got last. it over at KC. You got it up at every coach has got a Belichick. Son. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. And, you know, you have Rex Ryan. At least these kids played college football. At least they did some things and became Hicks. These, you know, I'm not. I'm not saying it's about Lombardi's grandson. I'm not that legacy. I'm sick and tired of legacy. That don't mean nothing. Shanahan, all of them. You know, when they guys, when they kids come up, they they come up in the NFL ring mm-hmm. and they show up at practice with their dad and they watch film. And next thing you know, you sit down and dad is saying, here's what you need to look for. Here's what you need to look for. They're just learning that. And then they take that, what they what he's told them, and go up in the box. And you learn that. And nothing changes year. then. 
Nothing. Right. Nothing Kubiak, will change. Yeah. Kubiak wasn't a great quarterback. <laughs> right. He was not. And his son is not a great offensive coordinator. Kubiak was there in the glory days for the Broncos, but that residue sometimes don't drift down to the next brain. Mm -hmm. That was in his head. That's what he saw. Now you're telling him what you saw, and he didn't see that for himself. And Go coach rough. a high school football team or something. Yeah. Then, Earn it. And Put then the D3, right? you know? And then go D3, go D2, go yeah. D1, and then bring yourself up. So, mm -hmm. so I had a conversation with, with Mike Grant this uh, this summer. I interviewed him for something. I love and, Mike and Grant. He, and he, he told me a story about, he said that, uh, that his dad wanted him to try out at one point, and he's like, I'm not going to make it. I'm just going to be a camp body and whatever, whatever. And he found out later from his mother. His mother said, you know, your dad thinks you really might've made the team that year or something, whatever that was. And he goes, my dad didn't tell me that, you know, and whatever, but you know, his dad told him to go play for Gallardi and go learn from Gallardi and, you know, and the rest of that. So, I mean, I, I think that there's that some he of that, did. we've lost that. I mean, that whole generation of the greatest generation and the rest of it, who now most of them have left us, they went through the depression. They went through World War II. They went through all these unusual circumstances and everything, and they had to make it. Mm -hmm. And this whole nepotism thing. Now we've become so we so coddle our children and the rest because we it's hard. We want the best for them. And yeah, sometimes they just got to leave the nest. Whether you yeah, put them in right. somebody else's nest. I just saw that uh, right. um, one of Harbaugh's kids is is now going to join PJ Flex staff, but it's the second time he'll have coached with them, and he's gone to a couple places in between. Yeah. I don't have a problem with that. You know, if they've no, gone around and proven themselves at different places, okay. Yeah. Well, I remember my dad used to for your dad. Go yeah. ahead. I'm I was gonna say my dad used to hate coaching me, right? Because he didn't know how to balance it. He's like, I'm gonna be extra hard on you, which probably isn't fair, but he's like, I don't want you to think that you're favorited in any certain situation, right? Like it was always that tough love thing, and he's like it's, I don't want to do this because I don't want to do that to you. But also you need to work harder here. He's like, I'm going to always tell you to work harder than you think you should. And he's like, I don't want ever, ever, ever want you to think that anything's just going to be handed to you. And certainly that's something that's been applicable in all positions of life, right? Like I've learned that from the get go, like anytime something's handed to me, I'm like, it doesn't feel right. Like there's something, there's gotta be a catch, right? Like I need to work my butt off for it. 18 intern right. internships later here, I'm finally making at the age of 30, you know, 34. So <laughs> Sometimes you just got to work. Work hard. It'll yeah. happen. All right, 959. Heather, is Capo Kacken in stealing games? <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead, Heather. Damn. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> Why is this my problem? I'm not Alexis. <laughs> <laughs> this was this was something that uh, I've been picking at Jesse about yeah. because I'm a capo guy and and, yeah, and I went in and they just I'm all a hype button and and Alexis and Kevin Gorg and Jesse just set through shot arrows in, in capo in this fall and I'm just like I like capo and you now capo's yeah. stolen two games in a row and I just want to hear Jesse Pierce say it <laughs> I he will played, yeah. he played really well he played really well because I think <laughs> the other night I mean the, he and he made well I think one of them actually hit the post but he made the two stops in the shootout that he needed um there but Washington wasn't exactly the sharpest I don't think in that game either so that might have contributed to it but I want to see the the consistency throughout however many well that's the other problem too they don't have a game till Friday but I want to see the consistency over some games and wow. let that play out like Dean said the other night too he's like well he needs the reps like he hasn't played because obviously Talbot's the, the number one so I don't, I don't know if he's stole games. I mean, he's, he's all right. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> I'll, you know I'll now say you it. know how I feel about, about Big Cat. That's what you guys <laughs> were doing to me with Big this Cat. Is, this, is what what do. Do. Uh, this is what I do. This is what I do. I do think he stole the game against Washington because I think you look at that game and goaltending kept them in it. Absolutely. Right. And like Heather said, he made the two stops in the shootout, which obviously help them win too right you can't you can't just have the goal scorers score you gotta also do that um but i i like heather also said you need consistency uh capo did this last year when cam was hurt as well right he played really well down the stretch while cam was injured as soon as cam came back it all kind of fell apart which it is exactly apart. like they cannot mm -hmm. and it's it's tough because as heather mentioned dean said he needs the reps well, they're not going to give him the rest because they have Cam as their number one. So again, it all goes back to the original point, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> this goaltending tandem will not be successful because 
Cam can't carry the workload. Koppel can't just step in cold and play one game a month or whatever it is. So something needs to to break. I, it, I mean, it, well, and is, March will be really interesting. March is going to be interesting. They're going to have like 87 games. So they're going to need him to play. Yes. And he's going to need to be successful because they're going to be down the stretch there. And then that's where they're not going to have the rest. They're going to need him to step up. So, yeah, yeah I, I think hope we you're could right, see... Tim. I hope yeah. you'd love to have a good yeah. goaltender develop mm -hmm. under Minnesota. That doesn't happen. But you also got this Jesper Wellstead waiting. Oh, just, no, I, you know, you know, he's going to come in and he'll be a true number one. I'm okay for, with that. Right. Yeah. I'm okay right? With that. But I, I've said to Kevin Gorg, like, you know, kind of went, I think they got it backwards. I think Capo is number one. And I think Talbot is age is number two. And he looked at me like I had three heads and he played the position, <laughs> right. You know, and everything. So it's like, I know these guys know what they know and I don't, they see them every day. They know what they're doing, yeah. but, but I just want to be right. I know. Right? <laughs> me too. Me too. <laughs> I said, you're just petty. That's I am. Just saying. That's a, I'm that's as like thin skinned as they petty, come. Man. There's stay, no stay doubt. True to, stay true to Capo, my friend. Stay true <laughs> until it comes true, like I did with Big Cat. Just stay true until it comes true. Oh, Mike's on fire today. So let's let's wrap it up by talking about our Timberwolves playing Shut tonight. Up, Mike. Me and you were boys, man. Come on. So, Willie, I talked about this. They, they're playing um, New Orleans, and. Um, Early when the Wolves were rolling early, they played this. And they had this center, Val Ciunas, and he 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 beat up Cat and he took his lunch money. And and I said to you, the next time they played, I go, I need to see Cat, you know, come back and and you know. So this is this is it. I think if they lose this game tonight, it's because Val Ciunas gets the better of Cat. And I think if the, the if if um if the Wolves win this game, it's because they keep playing the way they've been playing, where right. everybody contributes. Happen. But but cat but cat's got to be a little bit more around the basket tonight. He likes to play off the top of the key, and I can't argue when they're winning by eighteen and a half points. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, on average. Pull, well, somebody got to come up there and guard him. So because he'll knock it that, down, pull that beast away from there. Yeah, I mean it's like cat. Cat don't go back and get his money. I'm telling you that he's got back. He went back and got all the money that's been taken from him in the first part of the year. <laughs> he's coming back collecting all money and some, and kicking over furniture on the way out. They're doing it, man. They're they're. They're 500 right now, and I love it. You know what I said at the beginning of the year? I said, give me 40 games before I make a determination on this team. That's what I said. That's what I said. <laughs> you stealing my stuff, Tim? You stealing my <laughs> I said, you give me 40 games, and then I'll tell you right now, if they come out 500, they are a good basketball team. That's, that's more than you can expect from this team right now with this coach in his second year. And putting his team together, and like I said, he's coaching uh, Saunders' team from the, the first half of the year last year. So now, now you've seen his defense, his offense, and, and his culture out there. And I think that that's what you're seeing. And and I I have every bit of faith in this team that they're gonna they're gonna be a good playoff basketball team right now. It's fun to watch. They are. They are. They're beasts. They're not. No one ain't looking at the Timberwolves going. Man, I can't wait to play those guys. We need to win. That's right. That ain't the team no more. Yeah. And neither is the wild. <laughs> is this yeah. Minnesota? Yeah. <laughs> Vikings. Vikings is still that team, though. <laughs> Can't wait to play the Vikings. I'm sure Detroit said that. Heather, what's going we on with you? Um, I have, let's see, tonight, um, Boisetta at Minnetonka girls hockey. Nice. Tonight. So. Minnetonka is loaded. You need, I need, next time you're on this show, you need to tell me how 14 girls from 18 different programs around Minnesota suddenly ended up at Minnetonka in the same year? Answer me that question. That's what I want to know, Heather Rule. Well, you, you can preface it by saying, I work with this jerk there, that really so. wants me to ask this question, but I want an answer. Deep dive, Heather. Do a deep dive in those yeah. people. Something sketchy is going on over there. Yeah. yeah. There's a yeah. super team over there in Minnetonka. How did that happen? <laughs> they played JP, the late conference. That's a good conference. I mean, they got yeah. to compete with Edina too. But so. but they left. But they left Breck and they left Andover, and those were power programs. And all of a sudden, so how did that happen? I mean, I'm just well, not trying to be a jerk, but I mean, I yeah. legitimately want to know. Stern. Something was going on at Breck though, because Breck's coach resigned in the middle of last season. So something was going on at Breck that they didn't mm -hmm. like or something because that and yeah. i have to look at the record again but i looked earlier this season and breck didn't even have a win so yeah no everybody left yeah right so <laughs> I they all ended like up it. at minnetonka I'm i wonder does anybody have a new house that we should know about what's going on here <laughs> there's just a mailbox out there somewhere by the lake <laughs> Tiny car. Yeah. jp what's up with you 
Uh, wild practice because they don't play until Friday. Actually, I'm not even covering the game Friday. I am heading uh, north to International Falls for Icebox Days, ladies and gentlemen. So I will be dominating on the ice in dodgeball, golf, and uh, turkey bowling. Yeah. I know. See, Willie it looks like that. fabulous. It's going to be super fun. Yeah. I'm, I'm guessing there's going to be alcohol involved. There might be a smidge. I might have to stay warm. <laughs> we'll post, post photo so I can comment and say oh. how much I will not be doing that. Yeah, it's going to be great. It's uh, negative 38 up there right now. So really oh. excited. Mm-hmm. I like the fact that Willie had to suggest that you post photos. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah no. Willie, try to stopping her. I literally, if I don't, Talking. people will be like, are you okay? And I'm like, oh, that's weird that you're concerned, but I'm fine. I just... <laughs> a little break, so. Yeah, that's what we got going. Doctor Miles. <laughs> no man, I got I got nothing going on but LPE. That's all I'm doing <laughs> the whole week. I just look forward to this, man. I got I'm so thankful for the two weeks I got off, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm 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 just happy. No, I'm not coming, Mike. That's not, <laughs> Only don't, a don't ever car ride. Me. Anything has to do with ice cold, and if you're going to International <laughs> Fall, just really just count me out. You know, I'm not in. <laughs> Even to go pick up a lottery check, I wouldn't do it. Mail it. In July? In July. Really nice. Well, in July is beautiful, yeah. But this ain't July. She's talking about not. this weekend. I heard her. No. <laughs> so, no, I got nothing going on. My next show's not till the 29th. And then, and then, and then come February, I am just, I got, I am booked solid. I got so many shows that I don't even know where I'm going. But I'm just enjoying these two weeks I got off, so. Well, I'm enjoying you. having all three of you. Thank you for coming in today. I don't know when the last time was I laughed that much. So thank you. That was a lot of fun. That was hilarious. A lot of it was yeah. on you, bud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's what I do. <laughs> yeah, you are. You guys are the best. This is Let's Play, whoops, every day. <laughs> and we thank our good friends at Northern Lids for sponsoring us and being on board for the ride. Thank you for you guys for your time and your talents. And when you're faced with a situation where they're given the opportunity to stay on the sidelines and just lob rocks or actually get in the game and do something, we suggest you play and play every day.